one, two, three, forty-nine, fifty, fifty-one, sixty-two, sixty-three, nine hundred and ninety-nine. Um, a trillion, a zillion, a billion, and infinity. There are several ways that uh, you can think about infinity and one of the ideas that you might try is just to think of infinity as another number. And what number would it be? Well, many people would take as their starting point that infinity is one divided by naught. If you divide by something terribly small, you expect to get something terribly big. So if you divide by the smallest number of all, you expect to get the biggest number of all. So it's uh, a natural thing to uh, say that infinity is one divided by naught. But if you think about it like that, you run into uh, at least some problems. You can't just think of infinity as another number that obeys all the arithmetical rules. And it's very simple to show that. Um, if infinity is one over zero, then one of the rules that you could apply is that you could multiply both sides of this equation by zero. So let's do that and we get that naught times infinity equals one. And naught is obviously equal to naught plus naught, so naught plus naught times infinity must equal one. And having done that, it's very tempting to expand out the brackets here. And if I do that, I get naught times infinity plus naught times infinity equal one. But what was naught times infinity? It was one. So let's put a one there, plus one equals one, and now we've arrived at a piece of nonsense, one plus one equals one, uh, which is a problem. And what is the moral of that? You cannot include infinity as a normal number and expect all the rules of arithmetic to continue to hold.